Welcome everyone for the second uh, R class tutorial. In the second session, we would like to discuss uh, quality estimation and uh, go through examples of practical uh, regression quality estimation in R class Mira. So let me start with uh, a little background. Uh, this is a per class tutorial. So per class is a company based in the Netherlands. Uh, we originally were researchers in the field of uh, machine learning and uh, spectral imaging. And um, for quite some time, we did uh, out of academy, uh, we focused on industrial applications and developed uh, algorithms uh, for different companies, machine learning algorithms. And we always had actually projects, also a spectral uh, imaging component, and that was more and more important for us. So in 2018, we uh, released a specific product uh, for spectral imaging, and that product is uh, uh, per class Mira. That is a user interface that uh, enables uh, anyone who understands uh, what is in as, uh, as spectral images to interpret the data and do it without uh, programming and machine learning uh, expertise. And that's the software that we will be using in today's session. Uh, those of you uh, who uh, registered uh, got from us the email and uh, maybe you installed the software uh, so you could also go through the same um, process uh, yourself. Uh, you could do it in this session or uh, of course, uh, we can discuss it during the Spectral Expo event. We will be uh, on this uh, on the same Zoom link in our virtual booth uh, for all three days. So we are happy to connect with you and look also on your desktop and maybe your own data and discuss uh, specific uh, questions. The reason why we actually do this, uh, we would like uh, to um, help people in, in the industry in applications, uh, different applications to go from spectral cubes to interpretation that is application specific. And this transition is posing a lot of different, uh, raising a lot of different questions. And uh, we are basically helping people to help themselves. That's the, that's the goal uh, for, uh, for our class mirror. Um, what kind of interpretation we have in mind? Uh, there are different ways how we can interpret uh, spectral images. Uh, we are originally coming on the research side mostly from the classification side, so uh, distinguishing different materials, finding foreign objects, uh, finding defects, classifying uh, on the object level or pixel level. Uh, you can also do a lot of visualization, uh, defining spectral indices, extracting basically unseen things in spectral data. On these two topics uh, we touched uh, in yesterday tutorial, we have uh, examples of both classifying plants and then visualizing custom uh, spectral indices. Today, I would like to focus on the third one and that's the regression. So how do we estimate some uh, quality characteristic from spectral images? It can be uh, sugar content, uh, it can be moisture content, protein uh, or um, other uh, concepts that are sometimes quite high level. Uh, people are now modeling uh, taste related attributes, uh, plant stress, uh, processes like uh, rust and other kind of uh, specific processes. Um, these cases basically uh, have some additional numerical values attached to objects, attached to uh, locations and spectral images. And that's what we will be learning from. When we open the software, you are presented with this uh, uh, dialogue to start a new project and uh, we can select the project type. There are many different presets for different types of cameras that we are working with. In this um, session, we will only use the NV uh, project type, which is just a generic NV uh, loader. Uh, we can select where the data is located. So that's what we call top uh, level data directory. Uh, here is my desktop. Uh, you see the directories for the two sessions. So we can, for example, select uh, the top level data directory here or directly in one of the data sets. So let's start with tomato bricks data set. So that is my directory. You can also select uh, a device, a CPU or GPU if you have it. For people who are trying the software, uh, there is a um, 
uh, build uh, of per class mirror that supports the GPU and you need to start it from the installation directory uh, to uh, see the multiple devices. So we use the GPU. This is environment of uh, per class Mira. On the left side, uh, we have a list of images. And we start by adding some scans to our project. So if I uh, click on add scans, uh, we look into this top level data directory and you see here the header files, number of scans. So we can select uh, all of them and add them to our project. So what you can now see are scans with one or more tomato pieces. And these are hyperspectral images. If we move around with the mouse, you can see on the right side a spectral plot. Our data is coming from 400 to 1,000 uh, nanometers. We have 192 bands. Uh, this data comes from our customer Wageningen research. That do, they do a lot of uh, different uh, studies in, uh, in plants and in food uh, products. And for this data set, we not only have the, um, the scans, but we also have the accompanying information. So I will just go to the to Explorer in the same folder and you see this uh, tomato ground truth uh, Excel file. And if we open it, we have extra information. We have the name of the file and we also have uh, BRICS values uh, available. So the sugar content uh, was measured for all tomatoes in each scan. They were basically all used together to make one BRICS value. So what we would like to do in this uh, tutorial is to uh, analyze this data and build uh, a solution that will be able to process a new scan. Uh, we want to be able to identify a tomato and per tomato, per object, uh, estimate the BRICS value. Uh, how we do that? Uh, first step in per class Mira is uh, build classifier. So we are starting from a classifier, but let's first maybe look at the, the data, not as a single band uh, view that we had. We can go through different bands, but let's look at the data as RGB preview. We can drag these uh, RGB sliders to get more realistic view of, uh, of the fruit. So we can see that we have different maturity levels. This is just very few scans, part of much bigger data set. Uh, the first step uh, will be building classification model, and for that we start by adding classes. So we uh, add the class of background, and we paint some examples of background. And then uh, we are interested in a class called tomato, and get some examples of how tomato looks like. We are interested in uh, uh, having classifier that will identify a good tomato surface. So we want uh, to only uh, apply the regression modeling and build the regression models from uh, good quality data. We don't want to use, uh, let's say, reflections or defects. So one way how to deal with uh, reflections, defects, and other kind of artifacts is simply to define classes for them and build classification model. You can just have a class that we call reflection and we simply so define that part, simply not the spectra we want, and we may uh, define another one called defect and make some examples of one of the defects. Uh, now I click on model search. The software will use uh, the data as is, uh, look at different uh, ways to, to build statistical models and uh, return the, the results in the best model found. So we were looking at the labeled image on the label layer where we actually at our annotation, and when we train the model, we get uh, automatically the decision a layer where for each pixel, the best model is applied, and we have a decision per pixel. Uh, you can see actually also the underlying image. That's why, because we are blending the two layers, there's an alpha button, transparency button, where you can go from only the decisions where you just see the colors for the classes to define or on the other extreme, uh, only the, the data. So we are often using something in between so that we actually can uh, see through our decision layer. 
Uh, this looks quite okay, but of course we need to make sure that uh, the model works uh, well on all images. One tool that we can use is uh, this uh, active learning tool, uh, that is this show unknown button that will add an extra decision that is in transparency and uh, is uh, basically highlighting um, what uh, what are the, the data that the model has experienced before. Then you can see the, uh, the proper decision. And in, in gray or transparent gray, we see the part that is unseen in training. And that means that it's quite a different data. It can be basically outlier of any kind or unknown material. And the, the idea of active learning is that you may, uh, which I want that this stroke is tomato. So you may want to improve your labeling and update the model so that our classifier knows better, the more relevant part. If we start looking through the data, you see that we jump to a tomato that is red, but we actually completely miss it. It's all unseen in training because we only so far trained on green tomato. So we can provide more examples. And uh, now we are able to classify both uh, green and uh, more reddish uh, tomatoes. So this process uh, is quite important when you are defining regression modeling because often you work with uh, strong variability in your um, product, uh, you have different uh, subtypes, varieties, and so on. And you should really make sure that for your training data, you get a good quality, uh, accepted, well-trained model. So that's what we uh, basically did right now. And uh, we may uh, proceed uh, further. Uh, now, the next step, uh, in building the regression modeling is actually identifying the objects. So we have a pixel classifier, that's very good, but we need to uh, attach the, uh, the, the metadata for a regression, in our case, bricks values to objects. That's the kind of concept that we use in Berkowitz Mira. And to define objects, we need to choose what class or classes are actually foreground. We are interested only in tomato classes foreground, so we flag it as foreground. And then we can go to the objects uh, mode, and uh, we basically will only turn the decisions into connected components. And they have different colors because you have two connected components, object one, object two. Um, that is the whole panel for uh, object related uh, things. We could, for example, set the uh, minimal size in, in pixels. Uh, so uh, objects smaller than 50 pixels in our case would be discarded. Of course, these uh, tomatoes are very big. If we display a, a list of uh, the objects found, we will see also their uh, sizes in pixels. So you see that it's 8,000, 10,000 pixels. We will also see their bounding boxes and uh, centroids. Uh, now we have uh, basically the model, uh, uh, the classification model, and also object segmentation can be applied to any of scans and we can uh, move to uh, defining the, uh, the regression model so how do we uh, uh, how do we attach the uh, numerical values like bricks or acidity or anything else you want to learn to our uh, spectral data the first thing we can do is to do it manually so if you look at uh, our scan uh, v408 uh, the bricks value is 3.4 so what we could do is uh, go to our uh, scan and basically right click, say, I want to uh, add a point annotation and uh, put that 3.4. And we just get a point that is carrying the value of 3.4 with it. Uh, that's sometimes useful because you want to really have full control on it. But uh, of course, in larger studies, we want to import uh, the annotation for all the images from our uh, Excel file. And that's what we can do by uh, going to regression, import point metadata, and we can load our Excel file. And then uh, we need to specify uh, where is actually the first cell of a column with scan names. That would be for us D2. And also later where the values are started, that is F2. So we will fill in D2. And the values for our variable that uh, by default it's variable one, for us it's actually breaks, but we did not change the name, it's F2. If we refresh, 
we get the values from the uh, Excel file loaded uh, together with scan names. And on the right side of uh, the import dialog, we can now match them to uh, the uh, images selected in uh, our workspace. So in our case, we can just do the exact match by default because uh, in our Excel file, uh, we have exactly the same names as uh, in our project. And when the match is found, we get the numerical values. We can choose if we want to attach uh, only to the largest object or to all objects in uh, each scan and uh, perform the annotation. So basically now the values were loaded and attached to the objects. So in each scan, we will uh, have uh, the same value for all objects in the scan. That's the use case, uh, let's say number one, that, uh, is quite simple that all the tomatoes were measured together and we know that they have bricks of value of five. It's also possible to uh, attach um, the annotation to specific objects, but uh, that's, um, that's a different, uh, let's say data set or different problem. So now we have the annotations and we can proceed to the regression panel and we can run the model search. And what happens is that we uh, uh, get, um, the software basically goes through all the scans that are annotated uh, and uh, uh, will uh, extract the needed information uh, and then uh, look at different ways to do regression modeling. And we end up with uh, this uh, plot where the uh, horizontal axis is the true value of our variable, the vertical axis is the estimated value, and each point here corresponds to one of the tomatoes, one of the objects. All the points are red because uh, we are using all of them for training. And that's, of course, uh, something that uh, is uh, only the first step. We, uh, we would like that uh, some of the uh, scans uh, or some of the objects are used for testing uh, so that they are really excluded from the modeling. It's very important, especially for regression, for any machine learning uh, analysis, um, because we really want to assess the performance on completely unseen data. What you can do in per class Mira is to flag some of the images for testing. So we are not doing any uh, like per object uh, test uh, set, but we are really doing it on the level of images because it's simple, understandable. And uh, now we flag these two scans and we can uh, rerun, for example, the model search. And what you see here is that uh, we get some red points, but we also have some green points that are multiple because in uh, this scan, if you want to know what was the data, we can right click and see the command go to scan of this test point B5. So that was one object. And on this other scan, we have uh, five uh, different objects. So they are the test examples that were not used for any of uh, the training. Uh, useful thing to do if you have uh, few samples uh, is to actually play with different uh, training and test sets. You can flag them as you saw by, by hand. So you could just select anything else and you can just uh, flag, uh, you can just flip the, the flag uh, and basically just uh, retrain, for example, the same model. Or you can uh, select a set of uh, samples and go to image flags and even flag a percentage of images for testing. So you can, for example, get 20% of all selected images randomly as testing, and uh, we can retrain. You see that may start uh, happening that some of your images are actually far away from the data. Maybe that you need more data to, to build a good regression model, or uh, you may have other reasons for it. If you look at this scan, we see uh, that uh, it's uh, having quite a different value. Uh, when we have the model built, we can actually apply the model to any scan. If it's annotated or not, it just should be the data cube from uh, the same sensor, the same bands. The classifier is applied, the uh, segmenter is applied, and then uh, the, the uh, regression is applied for each uh, object. So we can see the, the difference that was here quite large. Um, what might be the reason sometimes is that your spectrum is noisy. So far, we were 
using only uh, you, you were using the entire spectral range but in per class mira you can play directly you can select what bands you want to include in the analysis you can go back and uh, retrain in our case it did not uh, help another thing uh, we can uh, do is to use preprocessing for example we could uh, use smoothing or we could uh, use uh, a derivative smooth derivative and uh, in that way you can uh, sometimes uh, see uh, that, uh, that things will uh, improve. Like for example, using the second derivative, we are getting the, the points, uh, these points more closer to, uh, to the entire range. So here we have the regression model. Uh, what you might want to do is to select uh, your scans and export uh, the results. You can export the regression results into Excel. And uh, if we uh, again look in Excel, you will see the regression results document where for each scan uh, we uh, have uh, multiple objects, we have their sizes, uh, bounding boxes, if you have true values that are included, but it's not necessary, you can apply, of course, the, the model to anything. Uh, and then you have the estimated values. So basically, uh, here you could, uh, uh, you could quickly build a, uh, uh, your own analysis uh, and compute your own uh, errors uh, uh, or do analysis on your problem further. So one thing is uh, that you can do is the processing and another thing is uh, the, uh, the selection of the bands that can be quite interesting. You can also quickly uh, experiment with specific ranges like where the information is really relevant uh, for the modeling. Will it break or will it actually just uh, get uh, better? So this was uh, in a nutshell uh, the process. We started by uh, building classifier, the identified objects, then we brought the annotation in, and uh, then you can basically do the object level uh, regression modeling. So uh, characteristics such as Briggs acidity or limonene that is specific for different fruit, also firmness of the fruit, uh, assessing the moisture, fat content, uh, looking at protein content, uh, looking at uh, animal feed, for example, characterizing locally uh, where are the proteins allocated or how much protein is uh, present. Looking at stress of plants over phenotyping studies, different types of stress and reasons for it. And um, also other uh, phenotyping attributes such as nitrogen. We also had uh, cases of people looking at uh, surface, uh, let's say, uh, rusting processes or different types of maturation processes on metal surfaces and also mixing the mixing proportions, estimating mixing proportions in um, known mixtures. There are many others, of course. Uh, so thanks to everyone for joining the session and uh, wish you to have a great uh, Spectre Expo event.